So Congress just snuck in and passed national gun control in a $1.5 trillion spending bill. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think Congress needs to stop violating our rights to keep and bear arms, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. So like I said in the intro, Congress just passed a $1.5 trillion spending bill. However, buried within that 2,741 page budget bill and spending bill, they snuck in some national gun control measures. This was a bill that got streamlined through the House and Senate, also because not only was it actually giving government more money, excessive money for spending for their next year, but also it included around $13.6 billion in aid towards Ukraine. So they streamlined this whole process, but with that, they also had some hidden gun control in it. Now, what gun control measures were hidden within this spending bill? Well, hidden within it was the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act and the Nix Denial Notification Act. Now I'm gonna break down each of those and as far as what they do as far as gun control in just a second, but first I wanna let you know that in the House in passing this spending bill, there were 39 Republicans that voted in favor of it. And when it passed the Senate, there were 18 Republicans who voted in favor of it. So you had a ton of people who alleged to be to a advocates voting in favor of a spending bill that had a bunch of gun control in it. Now what was hidden in this spending bill? First, let's talk about the Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act. This is something Democrats have wanted to get repassed for a long time. In fact, last year, H.R. 1620, which is essentially the same bill, passed the House with the help of 29 Republicans also. That solo bill on its own did in fact stall out though in the Senate because it didn't have enough support. That is why they decided to just cram it into the spending bill. Now I will say that this iteration of language that passed in the spending bill has some sections that were removed from the prior language. Previous sections 101 and 102 that said that they had funding for police training to execute red flag confiscation, that language was actually removed. Section 801, which was the boyfriend loophole that you hear people like Biden discuss sometimes was also removed. If included, that language would be, have actually expanded the whole red flag mechanism beyond just actual spouses and like marital partners. It would have expanded that beyond just those spouses to any romantic partner, i.e. boyfriends, girlfriends, those types of individuals. That was one of the more concerning sections of language in the prior language because it would open the door for any type of scorned person in a relationship to red flag the other person and then essentially strip them of their right to keep and bear arms. Now, beyond just reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act, the spending bill also passed the Nix Denial Notification Act and also passed a law funding the ATF and allowing the ATF to deputize local police and attorneys. The deputizing local police action seeks to undermine various states as well who have passed Second Amendment Protection Acts. The Nix Denial Notification Act that was included in this spending bill establishes that if a background check system sends back a notice of denial, then the attorney general must send a report to local law enforcement in the state and they must identify where the person sought to purchase the firearm, the date of time, and also the identity of that person. That report must be sent within 24 hours after the next denial, and the person will then be investigated. After the investigation into the person, if it is found that that person actually is able to be in lawful possession and be lawfully purchasing a firearm, then the report is then pulled. Now, you may be thinking to yourself at this point, what's the big deal with all that? Well, the issue is, that nine out of 10 times when a denial comes back from the NIC system, it is actually a false denial. And it's against a person who is a law-abiding person who can lawfully purchase and possess a firearm. That means that the government will be using a denial system that they know in fact 90% of the time is wrong. This is just a way for the federal government to expand their powers and to investigate and to look into law-abiding gun owners. Now beyond that, to me, one of the worst gun control aspects hidden within this spending bill was the cross deputization section that I mentioned earlier. This section allows the ATF to deputize local prosecutors and qualified attorneys for the purposes of having more presence within the state. This section goes beyond just allowing the deputization of attorneys and prosecutors, but it also allows the ATF to deputize state, tribal, territorial, and any local law enforcement officers. Now this is concerning not just because it's going to enhance the power of the ATF by having more acclaimed ATF agents, but this is also concerning for states that have passed Second Amendment protection laws. The language in this spending bill aims to circumvent those types of state restrictions. And it does this by allowing the ATF to deputize local agents 
law enforcement officers to essentially do their bidding and allows them to put pressure on them because then they can say, well, you're not actually working for the state anymore. Now you are a federal agent and you have to listen to what we want. For example, Texas passed their suppressor freedom law that bars any state law enforcement uh, officer from aiding the ATF in enforcing NFA regulations against Texas made suppressors. This new federal law would allow the ETF to wave their magical wand and make various officers within the state of Texas ATF agents. And then the ATF could say that you are now ATF agents, you have to listen to what we say. And if you don't, we're gonna try to do various things against you, maybe even remove your ability to actually work in any form of law enforcement going forward. So this is one of the nasty aspects of our current political system. We often see things like this hidden in large spending bills. And now we have more gun control as a product of all of this. The interesting thing with this is that the spending bill also gives billions of dollars to Ukraine to actually aid them. And as we all know, and as I've comprehensively uh, discussed and broken down in a prior video, Ukraine is demonstrating precisely right now why the right to keep and bear arms is so essential and important. Ukraine is encouraging and arming their citizenry to aid in the fight against Russia. The U.S. is helping to fund that through spending all kinds of money in the spending bill. But at the same time, and in the same spending bill, there is language that is trying to strip the right to keep and bear arms from US citizens. You just can't make this type of hypocrisy up. As I said, if any of these Republicans who voted in favor of this spending bill with this type of language in it is your representative, you need to let them know that you do not agree with this and that you will be voting them out very soon. For example, currently right now, the representative in my area is David Valadeo. And this is the second time that he has voted in favor of red flag laws and gun control. Now, I don't care if he says he's an agriculture guy. I don't care if he has a Republican or R next to his name. He will never get a vote from me ever again because he continues to vote for these types of two-way violations. One of the good things with this is that he's actually moving out of my district to a different district, which opens up a position for my friend, Adam Medeiros, who I know will actually support the second amendment. Adam is a man of God. He attends the same church as me. He's a family friend. I mean, we have the same Bible study together. We went to the same Bible study. Um, we're in the same fantasy football league together. Beyond that, he's just a great guy, a man of God, and I know he actually supports the Second Amendment. I've had discussions with him about his beliefs on the Second Amendment. I know he believes in the Second Amendment. I know he will support the Second Amendment if he actually does get elected, and I've even offered to help him if he is elected. So that's just an example and a shameless plug for a friend who I know will actually support the Second Amendment. If you're in the California 21st District, that includes Kings County, parts of Fresno County, Kern County, and Tulare County, consider voting for my friend Adam Medeiros. I'll put a link to him down in the detail section that goes to his website. And again, we need to actually vote in people who will support the Second Amendment and will not vote for this type of backdoor gun control. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video, like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Algor's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signal to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I cannot thank you guys enough for everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel, and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could have ever thought. So thank you so much for all of your support. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation with built by armed scholars, this nation with maintained by armed scholars.